Hi, I'm Mrs. Knoll, and this is second grade at Bridgeport Elementary, and we're going to talk about animal adaptations today. Hey, good morning. Yes, we're going to talk about animal adaptations today. So, we, in the past, we've talked about plant adaptations, but this is animal adaptations. And so, let's just do a real quick review. An adaptation is a body part or a behavior that helps an animal. So let's just review that. Go ahead and write that it is a body part. And that could be like teeth or claws or a beak. Those are all body parts that help an animal. Do you understand that? Yes, yes or no? Yes. yes. Uh, an adaptation can also be a behavior. A behavior is something that an animal does. For example, it might be in a school. It might run. It might hide. Those are two examples of body parts and behaviors that help an animal survive. Okay, let's take a closer look at it in your science book. Animal body parts as tools Think about different animals. Animals use body parts to, as tools. Gophers use their claws to dig into the ground. Now let me ask you, can you dig better than a gopher? No. 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 Although we have adaptations, gophers yep. have a body part that's really good at growing. Go ahead with your reading. Recap. Woodpeckers use their beaks to drill into trees. So can you guys use your beaks to drill into a tree? No. <laughs> no, you can't even chew into a tree, right? So a woodpecker has an adaptation, a sharp, strong beak to drill into a tree. Animals use their body parts to do work. All right, let's take a look at these four animals here in our book. The first one is a beaver, a blue jay, a sea turtle, and a badger. Take a few minutes to read the caption about the beaver to yourself. The beaver has long front teeth. It uses its teeth as a wedge to cut into wood. Very good. Check out the teeth of that beaver right there and check out that wedge. So a beaver is a very interesting creature. Do you know that a beaver, like a lot of animals, have these two teeth right here in the front. Find your two teeth. They're, like, they're called incisors. We use them to cut when we bite things. A beaver uses them to cut wood, to eat, or to build a shelter. You agree? But here's something. You don't want a beaver that has teeth that are wore out. If your teeth are wore out, would you be able to ah, 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 cut wood? No. no. So take your fingers like this. Let me show you what a beaver does. Their teeth, front incisors, don't go like this. They go like this, over one another. Every time they go over each other, they get sharp. It's like self-sharpening. And they're always growing. If a beaver didn't need wood, its teeth would do this. It would grow, grow, grow. And uh, yeah, shut its mouth. You know what I just said? No. It wouldn't be able to shut its mouth. So let's take a closer look at this with you guys showing me how beavers sharpen their teeth. Good, so you're showing me how the beaver's teeth go over each other and get sharp. Very good. All right, so let's make a chart that looks like this. Go ahead and put this on the back, right below what you've written. And our chart's gonna look kinda like this. Make it kinda big. It's gonna be divided in the middle. It's gonna have a line like this and like this and like this and here are our captions this one is going to be animal this one's going to be body part right this right here body part right here is the tool that it's like and finally this is the need the animal need that that adaptation helps with so go ahead and Make your chart look like that. Okay, so what was our first animal we just talked about? A beaver. A beaver. Go ahead and write that right here. Beaver. And what body part did we examine? Teeth. Teeth. And those teeth are what, what kind of tool? 
wedge. A wedge. And what do they use it for? What need does it take care of? Wood. It, it cuts, cuts wood for shelter. shelter and for food. And I actually have some of those tools right here. Here is a wedge. A wedge is like a knife. A wedge changes one direction into another one. So like if my fingers are together, I push this clam knife, push it straight this way, and it makes my fingers go that way. So a wedge, the teeth of the beaver, or like wedges, they chew down and the wood pieces go this way, the wood chips. So here is a wedge, like a beaver, and it's used to cut wood. Let's take a look at our next animal. The blue jay uses its beak to hold on the food. Its beak is like two levers. Levers. Okay, so on your next line of your chart, go ahead and write blue jay and see if you can fill the rest of the chart out. What's the animal? Blue jay. What body part are we looking at? Beak. 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 You have very good handwriting, by the way. A beak, and what what type of tool is it? Levers. 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 And what does it use it to do? Hold food. Hold food. Very good. Hold food. Okay, so nice job on that. So it's a blue jay which is a bird, right? Yes. And the body part was its beak, right? And what kind of tool? What, what kind of tool? Levers. And its need is to use to hold food and to eat food. Hold food and to eat. I started right foot, hold foot. <laughs> so that's a pretty good one. Let's take a look at our next animal in our book. Okay, so here is a lever that you might see in your kitchen. It has a fulcrum and two bars on it. Here's another lever that you probably use. This one is for cutting something really heavy. So this is kind of like a bird beak. This would be a big bird beak. In fact, this one would be a strange bird beak. Maybe this one is used for catching small little bugs in water. because It's like a net. So here's a spoon bill. Here is a big heron, and this might be some sort of a blue jay that can crack hard nuts. But there's one other lever that we all have on our body. Our body is filled with levers. Here's one. Very scary lever. Very scary. Let's take a closer look at this, Mrs. Noel. Okay, so this is actually a lever. Put your hand like this. Put your hand out. So your hand is kind of like a lever. And it's got, uh, there are tendons right here. And if I squeeze right here, watch what your hands. Relax your hands, ready? See how those fingers crawl, curl up? Just relax, relax it. In fact, when I pull on this, this lever works. Let's shake hands. All right. Nice to meet you. <laughs> this is so funny. I know, really? <laughs> Before you go back and do some reading, Ali, let's do a fist bump, ready? Bam! <laughs> okay, so your hand has a lever in it. Relax, relax your fingers. And if I squeeze on these tendons right here, your hand should curl up. Ready? Watch this. <laughs> can you feel that? Yes, I can. Bo boys and girls, you try that. Relax your hand. Push on the lever. Uh, push on the tendons, which are hooked to your fingers as levers, and it pulls right up. Go ahead and try it with a partner. <laughs> So even humans have body parts that are adaptations. You want me to do it on this hand? Very cool. Very cool. The, the sea turtle uses its lippers as shovels or levers. It kicks sand out of the way to build a nest. Check out that sea turtle. And let's fill in our chart for that animal. Go ahead. Uh, 
So what is the animal, boys and girls? A sea turtle. And what's the body part? Flipper. And what's the tool? Lever. And what does it use it for? To dig, right? To dig a nest. Dig a nest. I'm going to demonstrate some levers for you. Look at this one. Used for digging. I like this one because I could use this in a sand pile. Or dipping flour. How many of you have one of these for dipping flour? Or sugar? Mm -hmm. How about this one? Mmm, chicken and noodles. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. Yeah. yeah. Stop, Mrs. Noel. You're making us hungry. Sorry. <laughs> Badges' claws are like wedges. The claws help them, the badger dig into the ground. Check out that badger. Check out the wedges. And a wedge is like a knife. It pushes down and splits the force in two different directions. Who, who can dig a hole faster than a badger? Anybody? No, you can't, right? They have a really good tool for digging holes. Go ahead and write the last animal, which is a badger that has claws that uses as wedges to dig into the ground. Okay, so since we're talking about animal adaptations, I thought we might examine an animal up close. This is a bearded dragon, and it comes from Australia. And one thing you might notice, here's an adaptation. What do you call it when an animal can blend in with its background? What's that called? Um, oh, camouflage. Camouflage. If you look at this guy, he's nice and camouflaged. He's on that tree bark. And since he likes to climb, what body part or adaptation helps him climb? His, what his do you claws. Think? His claws. His claws. And if you take a look close at him, they're really sharp. And they're so good that I can turn him upside down and he still holds on. No. Not for him. It's dangerous for me. I wouldn't want to hold upside down. He also uses his tail for balance. See his tail right there for balance. He wraps it around. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got a lot of like, adaptations. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing? I know. He looks like he's going to get ready to jump. So if he does, that's another adaptation. I'll have to catch him. <laughs> he also has scales that are sharp and spiny that helps him, protects him. And yes. He has a hoodie, too. He has like a hood right here. Check it out. And it opens to protect him. Like, it scares things off. It scares things off. It's kind of like, you know, boo. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got eyes for seeing. And uh, if we had a yellow flower, he's got really sharp teeth for eating a flower. He likes the color yellow. So these are some adaptations that are kind of cool. We got the color yellow right there. You have the color yellow right there? Bring it over here. Behind because he doesn't know if it's a flower. Oh, that's, here's yellow. Let's see. Let's see if he likes this yellow. Check him out. Eh? Don't look. No, that didn't do it for him. <laughs> I don't this is this is kind of big. Let's try this, ready? Look here, here he goes. Look, look, he's gonna lick it. <laughs> he's going, hey, it's yellow. That's the biggest flower I've ever seen. <laughs> but after one lick, he uses his tongue to test it, he's going, no, nah, can't eat it. <laughs> or I guess he he doesn't have time to eat it. Get it? Ah, get it. <laughs> All right, so this is a this is an animal, and he's got good balance. Four legs for climbing. He lifts his head up. If he's on the hot sand, he'll lift his body up to stay cool. Beautiful adaptations. An adaptation is a body part or a behavior that helps an animal live. We have some adaptations that make us very successful, and they are this. It's our very good brain. We have other animals that their claws are better than our fingers. Their eyes are better than our eyes. Their nose is better at smelling. There's a shrimp that can see a thousand times better than we can see. So our best adaptation is not our claws or teeth. When's the last time you chased down a deer, grabbed it, and bit through it, and ate it for dinner? Uh, no, you can't do that, right? No, no you got to cook it. No, you, you have to cook. Do that though. Well, what we do is we have a brain, and we have speech to talk, and we make tools. Those are three of our big adaptations. We make tools, we can talk, and have speech, and we have a brain. In fact, you guys right here in this class are doing one of the best adaptations in the world. You're at school learning. Animals 
don't go to school. <laughs> animals can communicate, but they don't have complex speech like we do. And they certainly, a few animals can make tools, like a crow or a chimp, or certain animals can make a tool, like an ape can take leaves, put it down in a hole, make a sponge, drink water. A chimpanzee can make a stick, stick it down in termites and eat them. And a crow can bend a wire to pick things up. So we're not the only tool makers, but we're the best tool makers. And those are our adaptations. Our brain, our speech, and our tools. And we have something else. Put your hand like this. See our thumb? Our thumb is opposite. Most animals, like this guy right here, all of their fingers point that way. Our thumb being opposite allows us to pick things up. Our thumb is a really good adaptation. Try writing just with your fingers. It's not easy. Try tying your shoes just with these fingers. Not easy. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at your worksheet right here. And the first part, after you have your name on it, says draw an animal. I want you to think about an animal that we've talked about. It could be a monkey and its tail. It could be a tiger and its sharp teeth. It could be an elephant and its trunk. It could be a bird and its beak. You could pick any animal. It could be a wolf and its long nose. I want you to think of the animal. I want you to think of the body parts. I want you to think of what kind of tool it's like and its knee. Draw the animal, draw the tool or body part, and then we're gonna use all this stuff here to make one. You guys ready for that? Yeah. Let's get started. Right now we're getting ready to pass out all our materials and the students are going to make an animal and then they're going to have an adaptation that they're going to make on their animal. What are you getting ready to do? A bird beak and that's like a lever, right? Nice job. Nice shark tooth. Nice shark and you're going to make a shark what? Shark teeth. Shark teeth, which are like wedges. Nice job on that one. I made a tiger and it's it's tool as it sharp teeth so it can eat. So it has sharp teeth and sharp claws. Claws for grabbing and teeth for eating, right? Nice job. I can't wait to see what that turned out. My animal is a mammoth and I'm a, and I'm talking about and my body part is its tusks. <laughs> A flying dragon uses its skin to glide to another tree or other, or it gets scared of prey and get food from another tree or other. Hold, let me see it. That's, so that's a dragon, uh, a lizard? Flying dragon. And what body part? It uses its skin to glide. Its skin to glide, and that's and, like a wing. And also they think they found a bag of Doritos atop of the trees. have a turtle and a turtle flipper because the turtle's flipper helps it push back the sand to bury its eggs into the sand. Show us. How is it pushed back? It goes like this. And so, and what tool is that? It's like a... It's like a shovel. A shovel, which is a lever. And our last one is, which one? Okay, can we see the, hold it up so we can see it? Very nice. So there is claws like a lever, a flipper like a lever, and we have skin in the shape of a wing. Good job, guys. I can't wait to see what everybody else is doing. Hey, so you guys now have your task ahead of you. You've designed your animal, you have the materials, and you've made body parts. Remember, an adaptation can be two things. It can be a what? Body part, body part. or a tool. Tool. behavior. And like, sometimes they're like tools. 